I'm stuck at the entrance to the park. The gate is locked. There's a group of people trying to get in and myself trying to get out. It is only 6.30 a.m. Pretty sure the park opens at eight in the morning and I guess they lock you in and you can't get out until they open these gates too. So I don't know what to do. I can't even turn around. This road is so narrow. All right, I just saw a couple of cars drive by. I asked one of them, hey, they open the gate yet? The guy's like, yeah, you trying to leave? <laughs> it's open, you can get out of here now.
Ah, yeah. Got me a little lunch snack. Couple slices of hella pie. Nice little block of ice. Coca Cola. Put that in the cooler for later. Oh yeah, I am very excited to get into this. I don't know if I needed two slices. <laughs> Plenty of crushed peppers, that's for sure. Yeah, look at that, buddy boy, huh? Maybe I did need two slices. Now I'm told by some people that I know here in Tracy that Hella Pie is good, but it can't compete with another spot. Can't remember the name of it. Um, I want to say Ray's because that's like the famous New York pizza name. But I got I got to look into that. Darren knows what it is. He's always going on about it. But he said they don't do slices. I don't need a whole pie. So that's why I like going to Hella Pie because they're one of the last places or only places around that you can actually get a single slice. Woo! -wee. Piping hot. $4 for a slice of pepperoni. Not bad in today's world. I'm gonna let this cool down for a minute. I think I'm gonna let myself cool down for a minute too. Open up this window here. Oh, ventilate a little bit. Starting to warm up. It is gonna be a hot weekend. It's gonna be an even hotter week. Mm. You see that? The little pepperonis, when they curl up like that, I love that. That is the best because all these little curled up edges, they get slightly burnt. And not burnt, but they get like almost like caramelized and crispy. Oh, that is the best. Mmm. Ah, oh, the tastes of another place and another time. Memories through flavor. It's such an interesting concept. Smells, flavors. Of course, sights and sounds, we know those produce memories, but flavors and smells really produce very vivid memories. While I can listen to a song and it will take me back to a particular moment in time. Maybe driving around here in Tracy during high school, bumping some kind of obnoxious music at some kind of loud volume, driving around neighborhoods, or whether it be just the smell of coffee or the taste of that crispy burnt end of the pepperoni. It takes me back to a certain place and a time when I had that before back in Brooklyn with Josh hanging out. Well, excuse me, Mr. Truck. <laughs> Enough about memories. I'm going to create some current memories.
Well, one more. What do you say? Yeah, that looks good. Well, it was Friday date night tonight, I know. <laughs> the solo male traveler has gone part-time, sometimes not so solo. Me and my old little lady friend, Julie, we went over to the IMAX theater in Brentwood, California. Some, I don't know how many miles, north of Tracy. And we took Highway 4, the Byron Highway, on up there to Brentwood. They got an IMAX theater, a big old AMC theater. And we saw A Quiet Place 2. Now, I'm not going to do a full-on movie review. I would love to do that. I really enjoyed the movie, but it's such a new movie. It just came out. I don't want to get into it too much. There's a lot to spoil, a lot of cool little twists and turns. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Anyways, all I want to say is, first off, that I really liked A Quiet Place too. I really liked A Quiet Place part number one. <laughs> I really liked A Quiet Place, the original. I thought it was a cool, interesting way to tell kind of like a suspenseful horror story. Not even a horror story. I don't know what it is. It's a suspenseful alien invasion film. But part two picks up where one left off in a sort of way. And it really is an entertaining movie. I had a great time. It's a great popcorn flick. Now, myself, having studied screenwriting in film school, I get how the movie is set up structurally as a screenwriter when certain beats, certain things are going to happen within the movie to get the story going. Because whether you know or not, screenplays are kind of formulaic, if you haven't figured that out. You know... First act, second act, third act, certain things have to happen throughout the screenplay. So I know at certain points, certain things are going to happen in a matter of speaking, but I like to always see how the kind of nuance of how they get through those acts into the next chapter, as it were. And, well, this movie is a definite popcorn movie. A lot of jump scares. A lot of, bah! how you doing? Who are you? And, uh, you know. When you least expect it, all of a sudden, an <laughs> alien comes out of nowhere, kills you. But <laughs> now, my friend Julie, she's a little bit susceptible to those jump scares. I know exactly when they're coming. It's like the crescendo of the music kind of slowly builds in the background as the regular soundscape slowly fades away to kind of give you this suspended animation feel. And right as it all peaks, <laughs> Gotcha. There they are, right? Well, here I am, screaming in my van. I'm a bit of a rambling moron right now. So, I'm going to bid you a fair farewell. I really did enjoy the movie, the date night, as it were.